How's your heart rate? Oh, I'm fine. I mean, you know, we hadn't been in a game like this. Well, one against Virginia early in the year. And we didn't execute with 16 seconds. Um, but then, um, I feel bad for Cal. But if I was their coach, I'd, I'd be really proud of my team. To have a, have a turnaround like they had, to lose their starting center, you know, to have their other big kid hurt, have one of their starters with a broken nose. Um, he, did a, he did a phenomenal job of coaching that team and controlling the game. Um, you know, they, they played about as perfect a game as you could pl play. They, uh, they didn't have something early on the break. They made us guard for 30 seconds. They took great shots. Um, I thought he managed his bench great. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, Nick Russell makes a big layup. Uh, and Nick Moore makes a huge shot. Uh, you know, he just missed the three earlier, and I, was, I wasn't real happy with the shot selection. And, but uh, we've, we've run that play in practice every day. You know, we, we practice it. We haven't used it once in a game, maybe once that I can remember. Um, I thought they would play man. They had played zone the whole time, and fortunately they were in man, and Marcus set a great screen. And, we got a wide open look. I wasn't thinking of a three, to be honest with you. I was hoping we'd be able to post the ball, you know. But, you know, we had a great shooter, make a big shot, and not be afraid of it. Um, and I think that's his M.O. But for Nick, Nick Russell and Sean, I'm thrilled. Again, they said something. I, I haven't talked to them about the NCAA. That was over in my mind weeks ago. We, and you know, we had our chance to go to the NCAA tournament. Um, we didn't get it done, but to be in the NIT, there's only 20 teams left playing now. And after this weekend, I think there'll only be eight left, and we're one of them. And that is so great for our program um, and for our kids. And again, I, you know, Matt Darty left me with some class kids. And I think the class of those kids allowed us to move on. I'm just um, with a, a finish like that, the excitement of the crowd, Nick Moore hitting a shot like that, how's that compared to any of the other games that you've seen throughout your career? Well, right now it's my favorite game. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, you know, I was kind of in awe of what they were doing, to be honest with you. Uh, but. You know, I'm just happy for our seniors. You know, I, I, we talked about this. We had a terrible senior night. The beginning of senior night was great because Nick and Sean were recognized and it was a full house. Last, last senior night we had, we had friends and family. But we had senior night against Louisville and you couldn't have a better atmosphere and we didn't play right. right. But we got a chance to have another senior night you know, and for those kids. And to have it end the way it did with those guys contributing, this is a highlight for me. Larry, I know it's all about your players, but what, what's it mean for you to go back home and play at the Mecca Basketball Garden? Well, I don't know if they'll let me in. <laughs> um, I got to go back, you know, when I was in Charlotte. I didn't now feel good about New York because of you know, I didn't do a real good job coaching the Knicks, but for my team, um, growing up, we talked about this. The NIT was huge when I was a boy. Um, and Fran Fischella put it in perspective when he talked to our team when we got into the tournament. But for me personally, I get to see my family. I get to eat at some great restaurants. Um, and I, I get to coach in a place that you know, it, it's special. I mean, it's the garden. Is, I'm so thankful our kids are going to get to have that opportunity. There's nothing better than that. It, when, and when you're part of it and you're going to see the excitement on their part, you know, that's why I feel so lucky I'm coaching. Coach,
I'd ask the players about was there any panic from them as the game got later? Cal kept hanging around, taking the lead. Was there any panic from you or any of the other coaches during that time, or were you just kind of sitting back and letting it play out? Oh, I wasn't sitting back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was trying to figure out how I could help our team get a stop, and I don't think I did that. You know, kid raised up and shot a jump shot. You know. Young kid raised up and shot a jump shot like it was nothing. When the ball, when the three went in that hit the front of the rim and bounced straight up, went down, I thought we were in a little trouble. But when I saw Nick, you know, drive baseline and make the layup, I thought, wow, you know, now, you know, it's in our hands. You know, all we have to do is get a stop and make a play. And, you know, we didn't get a stop the possession I was hoping for, but, you know, we got to stop the last shot. That I, I don't. I don't think I panic. I hope I don't panic. I've been through it enough. You know, you should enjoy moments like that. And when your team performs and makes a play, you know that you worked on. You know, I have great admiration for all of them. Good to have one more. Coach Brown, there was a moment in the second half where you turned to the, uh, the crowd and you did your hands like that. Explain that because they came alive. No, they were in the whole game, but they were loud. Ooh, they were loud. It, I didn't think it affected Cal. I was hoping it affected yeah. Cal. It affected me. I got real. I got goosebumps. You know, when you coach here like I did last year with my staff, and then, you know, I used to look to Tim and Jankovic and say, what the hell are we doing here? You know? And then we go to Garland. And it's friends and family, and you play seven games in Garland, and then all of a sudden this beautiful building opens up, and you have the kind of support we have. We don't beat Cal Irvine, we don't beat LSU, we don't beat Cal without the support. And that, I just hope they recognize that.